Welcome to the January 16th edition of This Week in South Carolina in Session. I'm Gavin Jackson from the State House here in Columbia. Senators took up a $20.5 million worth of vetoes dealing with school bus funding today in the Senate. Senators also heard testimony from Dominion Energy CEO Thomas Farrell on a committee dealing with the $14.6 billion deal. And one senator also chastised President Donald Trump in his derogatory comment from last week. Let's get into it. Dominion CEO Thomas Farrell fielded some difficult questions from lawmakers over the proposed merger that would stabilize Scana, which is SCNG's parent company, lower rates in the short term, and send $1,000 to the average residential rate payer, among other things. We know acutely the damage a weakened, even failed utility can cause to a state. We watched Scana's failed efforts to reach a settlement. We decided to construct an alternative that would give immediate and continual relief to customers, which at the same time would secure the required support of two-thirds of SCANA's shareholders. You have heard SCANA say that rolling back the Baseload Review Act retroactively could push them into bankruptcy. Some dismiss bankruptcy as not such a bad thing or even desirable. I respectfully disagree. In bankruptcy, everyone loses except the lawyers. Even the threat of bankruptcy will cause years of uncertainty for everyone involved. It will severely hamper economic development efforts in this state. You have worked very hard to develop a reputation for being a great state in which to do business. And I know you want to do everything you can to protect that reputation in the future. Any retroactive rollback of the BLRA would make it impossible for us to complete this combination. We think the same is true for any other company. Some lawmakers, including the committee's co-chairman, Shane Massey, had tougher questions for the Richmond, Virginia-based utilities CEO. Massey has called the deal a payday loan for customers since they'll continue paying around $4,000 in total to the two failed nuclear reactors. I, I don't buy it. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a bluff. I think we've been hearing it for several months. Um, and I'm not convinced that it would be terrible even if they did go bankrupt. I mean, how many people have flown on an airline that was in bankruptcy, right? I mean, there have been lots of businesses that have operated like that. Now, I don't know that it would be good. I don't know that it would be bad. I think those are things that we need to ask about, right? But before we even get to that consideration, I don't buy that they would go bankrupt. I, I just think if you look at, at what their market cap is, um, you look at the dividends that they're paying out in cash, um, I, I think they can take it. Now, it would weaken them, um, but, but I just don't buy that it would bankrupt them. And, um, I'm just not willing to give in to that being the alternative because I, right, how do I, how do I defend allowing a utility to continue charging you for something that you're never going to get? Because that's exactly what it is. Um, so I think it's easier to sell repealing it than it is not repealing it. And just for the sake of those who aren't in the room, aren't following this. Senator Mike Fanning, a Democrat from Fairfield County, home to the failed project, called out the intent and the number of utility lobbyists following the nuclear project and the Dominion deal. One well-known face in the crowd was former Democratic Governor Jim Hodges, who is lobbying on behalf of Dominion. You are here today representing Dominion, Nextera, Scana, Santee Cooper, Electric Co-ops, or in any way paid. Please stand and let us recognize you. These are some of my fellow employees here, sir. Thank you for recognizing And you may be seated. Folks, that's what Fairfield County is up against right here. That is what the people of South Carolina, the ratepayers, are up against right here. And I don't begrudge your presence. I'm glad you're here because you're looking out for Dominion. You're looking after Nextera. You're looking after SENG. You're looking after Scanner. You're looking after Santee, Co Co -ops, uh, Santee Cooper and the co-ops. But this is what the ratepayers of South Carolina are up against. And Mr. Chairman, you've made this point on the Senate floor. It's only going to get bigger and, 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 and worse as it goes on. When we were told over and over again, you got one option or you got to take it the way it is now. And when I looked out over that audience to see there were other players in the game that wanted to make a bid, that wanted to, to see what they could offer the state of South Carolina, we wanted to make sure that, that all of the offers come to the table at the same time so that we can make a decision of what's the best interest of the rate payers of South Carolina. The Senate continued their hearing with Farrell after their daily session here that dealt with gubernatorial vetoes. Now Farrell will also appear before a House committee, a similar House committee dealing with this deal tomorrow, Wednesday at 9 a.m. 
The Senate sent $20.5 million to the Department of Education to obtain hundreds of new school buses following the override of Governor Henry McMaster's veto. This will direct the uh, Department of Education to purchase approximately 218 buses with this money. There was some discussion about using lottery funds for the um, buying uh, school buses, and I'd like to direct the Senate to Section 59-150-350. says funds available from the lottery must be used for, and the, in the list is uh, uh, the one directing the Department of Education to purchase or repair school buses. So that's in the statute. The Senate also gave priority debate status for Bill H-3653 that deals with nuisance lawsuits against manufacturing or industrial sites that are operating legally. Also in the Senate, Democratic Senator from Charleston Marlon Kimson took to the well to blast President Donald Trump's reported comments from last week and also introduced some immigration-related legislation. Let's take a listen. Now I read this letter written in 1963 to flash forward to 2018, where we have a president of this country who uses such derogatory language on behalf of the people of this nation. Trump's mouth is often a place from which and whence a great amount of manure spews. And that sets the context for what comes out of this president's mouth. Now, I'm just not going to complain about our president because the context in which he made the statements were arising from a discussion with United States Senators about DACA. In that regard, I have filed a bill, a Senate bill, and I'm searching for the number, which mirrors the bill filed by Representative Neil Collins that essentially gives dreamers, mostly in high schools and in college, the opportunity to receive in-state tuition and the opportunity to obtain professional and occupational licenses. And the House had a quick day today here Tuesday in the State House, but returns tomorrow with several utility reform bills on their calendar. Also tomorrow evening, Governor McMaster will give his first State of the State address here before a joint assembly of lawmakers at 7 p.m. SCETV and South Carolina Public Radio will cover that broadcast live for you and the Democratic message from Representative James Smith, a Columbia Democrat. So stick with us as we get uh, the, those both on the air and also reaction from lawmakers following both of those speeches. And be sure to stick with SCETV throughout the legislative session this year. Watch daily legislative recaps Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday live at 7 p.m. on SCETV's Facebook page and SCETV's YouTube page. I'm Gavin Jackson in the State House in Columbia.